Good morning. <clears throat> it's good to see you this morning and welcome those who are joining us online as well. Good to be back with you today too. this beautiful day after being away for a couple Sundays. I trust you were in good hands uh, and that went well while I was gone. Uh, it's so weird having an entire section here that's empty. No one is in this section. A few people over here. I just had to point that out. Sorry. It's, visually, it's, a, it's an interesting... Uh, I've got to keep my head on a swivel here. Um, anyway. Uh, anyway, good to be back. Um, good for all of you who... I'm glad for all of you who are here. Today is the last Sunday of our liturgical year. And since the... 19, mid-1920s or so, this Sunday has kind of been slowly uh, getting the recognition and designation as Christ the King Sunday, or Reign of Christ Sunday, and that uh, kind of came about during that time in the 20s, you know, where there was increasing um, sense of nationalism and, you know, these um, factions between different uh, empires, different uh, powers of the world. And so uh, this day was designated as Reign of Christ Sunday or Christ the King, kind of trying to recapture that idea um, throughout the scriptures, throughout the history of the church, that uh, the reign of Christ is a dominion that is not seized by powers of the earth or by violence, but just by Christ's nature of who Christ is, that uh, love that we are held in and kept in and life that sustains us all. So that uh, honoring this Sunday, recognizing this Sunday is an attempt to, to recenter ourselves in that reality, uh, recenter our faith in that reality as well. Today we'll hear a judgment scene in Matthew where Christ is indeed on the throne and you'll uh, hopefully know it well, the separation of the sheep and the goats, and we're going to uh, dig into that story uh, later today for the, the message. Um, but uh, I think that's it for now. We'll have some more announcements later. Um, I'll begin with our land acknowledgement and then our greeting. We begin this service by acknowledging and paying respects to the traditional stewards of this land, the Atfalidi, the northern band of the Kalapuya, whose ancestors are now members of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde. We extend respect to their elders, both past and present, and join with our indigenous siblings in caring for this place, this land that they call home. Please stand as you're able for our, our greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. 
We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. And open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Uh, please remain standing for our opening song. Tree of life, an awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. Christ you lead and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river you the sea, we the river you the sea. We pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our first reading today is a responsive reading from the book of Psalm. I will read the light print and you will respond with the bold print. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us, let us come, come into his, his presence, presence with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Let, let us, us make, make a joyful noise, noise to him with songs, songs of praise. praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is a reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance, inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above the rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Would you please rise for the gospel acclamation? Wait for the Lord whose day
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was pr in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous in, into eternal life, the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. And at this time, I'll invite the children to come forward for our children's message right here. Hello, friends. Hello. How are you? Good? Yeah? Having a good morning? Has it been nice having so much time off of school for those of you who are in school? Having the long Thanksgiving weekend? Yeah? Thumbs up? You miss school a little bit? Maybe a little. <laughs> no? No? Not at all. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow, got to go back. Yeah, I know. I know. Sometimes it's like that. Hey, I have a book that I wanted to share with you. Well, a story from a book that I wanted to share from you. This book was written by a pastor in Australia. Um, he's since passed away. But uh, he wrote all these little, like, modern-day parables for kids. And they're kind of about, uh, kind of stories about Jesus, but through a different kind of way. Okay? And I wanted to tell you one today. I'll kind of summarize it instead of reading it here. Um, but I'll tie it in with, with the story we heard about Jesus today. This is called The Prince and the Man in the Dirty Overalls. And what happens is this prince, um, he's, he's a young prince. He's going to be king someday, but he doesn't exactly know how to rule. You know, he doesn't know what a king does. And so he asks someone, like, hey, I want someone to teach me how to be king. I don't exactly know what to do. And he says, I've heard of this king in the southern kingdom. Why don't you travel there and he'll show you what to do. So he gets on his nice princely suit and, you know, the, the, his sash and, and crown and stuff and kind of looks all important and shows up to this kingdom. And uh, someone meets him and says, you know what, the king will be with you at this specific time. You've got to be in this room at the castle door at noon. And you have one hour to meet with the king. And he starts thinking, what am, what am I going to learn in an hour? Am I going to learn everything in an hour? And so he shows up at that time in the room. And he's, you know, dressed all nice. And he shows up in this room. And then he opens the door. And this man is there who's collecting rubbish. It's this guy right here. See, here's a little picture of him. He's just kind of dressed in regular clothes. He's collecting rubbish. And the place is a mess. This room is filthy. And at first the prince is like, oh, what is happening in here? I'm supposed to meet the king in here? This isn't a room where a king is supposed to be. 
And the guy in there says, hey, could you help me clean up and get ready? He says, no, I'm a prince. I don't take care of rubbish. I don't take care of trash. I don't do that kind of thing. I'm here to meet the king. I'm an important person. I have important things to do. And the man says, okay, well, the king is going to have a party soon in this room. Will you help me set it up? Because it kind of needs to be set up nicely for these kids. Some kids uh, are going to need kind of special, special things to be there. And some are blind, some are deaf, some can't read. So we have to make the space kind of ready for them. And he says, no, I'm not going to do that. Get some servants should do that. Get your other servants to help you. And the man just kind of keeps on doing the work, and the prince is just getting a little more anxious. He's like, oh, when is this king going to show up? And eventually some, some time passes. As, uh, one of the king's um, messengers comes and says, the king has, is getting ready for, for a party. You know, it's going to be in this room. Uh, you, can, you can meet him here later. And he says, finally, I'll get to meet the king. And well, in comes that man who was dressed in the dirty overalls, except now he's wearing this crown as a king. He's wearing his robes. He's all beautiful and, and, looks, and looks just like the king. And the prince, what do you think he was thinking? Oh. I should have known, right? The whole time he was trying to teach me how to be a king. But he was what? In disguise, right? Yeah. And in that story that we heard today, we heard about Jesus being in disguise. Did you hear that in the gospel story? Yeah? How was, what, what disguise was Jesus in? What was he trying to tell his disciples? Do you remember? He said, hey, I was in all those people that you saw who were hungry, who were thirsty, who were in need, who were imprisoned. I was with those people. You should have recognized me in them and, and, and helped them. And that's what Jesus is kind of the message for his disciples is that his, his kingdom, the way he is king, is he is with those people who kind of need help, the people we might overlook or ignore. And that's kind of a challenge to us. It's not always easy to, to keep that in mind, is it? Yeah? Quiet bunch today, aren't you? <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to say a prayer for us and for this week, and then I'll let you go to Sunday school, okay? Let's pray. God, thank you for showing us that your love is simple, that it involves work, that it helps us to pay attention in this world. Pay attention to the small things and the people who might be overlooked. Help us to see that no corner of this world is too small for your love. And help us to do what we can to show Jesus' love to everyone we meet. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, friends. You have Sunday school today with Miss Katie. We'll see you later, okay? All right, talking about beef today. Some folks love a good beef. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, your, your porterhouse or your prime rib steak, but this is that beef that's kind of that oddly satisfying grievance that we might have. Think about nursing a good grudge, right? I don't know. I'm not going to ask you to raise hands and out yourselves. Some of you might enjoy, uh, you know, feeling that justification, right? Feeling that need to keep that fire burning. Um, that might just do something, do something for you. And that, we'll let you work that, work that out. Um, in fact, there was a Netflix show. I don't know if any of you saw that called Beef. Is by this about this little um, 
incident between two people, a rather small thing, that eventually uh, they, they both kind of turned it up a notch, turned it up a notch, and, and eventually they were just so entangled, these characters were so entangled in one another's lives that they could not just let this thing go. They had to keep going, keep going, and their, their beef got worse and worse and more and more damaging to them and their own little uh, relationships and ecosystems. And without giving up too, without giving away too much of the plot, eventually, in the end, in this, some strange way, they're both able to recognize each other in an unexpected way. An unexpected way. Uh, might be kind of a good theme today to, to keep in mind because in that scene that Jesus describes in today's gospel, that looks like this straightforward judgment scene. And first of all, our, uh, our theology often doesn't quite match that, right? We often talk about uh, having this theology of grace, right? This God who is a God who doesn't keep track of our, of our sins, doesn't keep score, you know, this God who separates our sin as far from east is from the west and remembers it no more. But here comes this judgment scene where it looks like God has actually been keeping score all along. So at the end of this parable, it seems reasonable to ask, hey, does God actually have beef? You know, does God have an issue with us? Well, this act of sorting sheep from the goats at first seems so objective, right? Jesus comes along and is talking about this scene at the, at the end where, where he, the Son of Man, he says, will come along and says to those who, um, who are the sheep who are on the right side, I'll do, let's see, you're right, right? Um, all of you who, are, who have fed the hungry, who have given water to the thirsty, who have welcomed the stranger, who have clothed the naked, visited the sick, visited those imprisoned. All you are are blessed. You'll inherit the kingdom of God. And those of you who are the goats, right? Those of you who who have not done those things, well, you're accursed and go to eternal fire, right? Because you did not do those things. You did not recognize the hungry, the sick, the, the stranger, um, or give water to the thirsty. Now, that seems pretty, pretty straightforward, right? But given the, you know, the nuances and, and depth to Jesus' parables and what he's taught us about who God is and how God acts, I think a really a, a closer, more thoughtful study of this is, is warranted. And first of all, we, we, I want to point out that both the sheep and the goats share one thing, Right? They're both surprised by Jesus' affiliation with those in need. Both of them ask, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, thirsty and gave you something to drink, you know, naked and gave you clothes? When, when was that? They don't recognize it. They didn't care for th- those who inherited the kingdom. They didn't care for those people in need because they saw Jesus in them. They were absolutely surprised by that. They just saw them, in theory, they just saw them as being human and in need and therefore deserving. And so they decided to do something about it. And to complicate matters, how much recognition is enough? What are we talking about here? You know, sometimes there are people that we, who are in need that we see, that we respond to, that we help. And there are some people that we pass by, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'm able to help, to give food, to give water, to give some attention, some money, some time. But other situations, I don't have those things. I might be in a hurry to help someone else, you know? So what are we talking about? How much is enough here? Are we talking about a simple majority of the time? That's not even a passing D grade, though, is it? Good luck passing your classes with that. Are we talking more in the C range, 70%? At what point does God decide, mm, yeah, that's good. You can, you can inherit. You know, that's enough. Or at which point is God like, mm, sorry, you, you didn't, quite, didn't quite meet that quota there. And maybe that's the wrong question. 
I appreciate the brutal honesty of the scholar here, Isaac Viegas. He has this really relatable observation. He says, we value our distance because we can handle only so much of the suffering of others. He admits, I'd rather have a statistic about poverty to use in my tirades against capitalism than a relationship with a person whose needs would add to the worries and responsibilities that keep me up at night. And in the end, he concludes, I don't want to be overwhelmed with the care for my neighbors. Ouch, but honest, isn't it? Because really, you and I are walking inconsistencies. We're complicated people. Sometimes we help where we can out of the goodness of our hearts, and sometimes we cannot. And we can go on and justify our choices about why we help sometimes and why other times we don't. But in the end, we're still left wondering which side do we end up on. But if we think that God is stacking up those times, the times that we help against the times that we don't on some sort of scale, then we're quite likely missing the point. Because I can't help but notice of the positioning of this whole scene in Matthew's gospel. Because right after this, right after he tells this story to his disciples, Jesus tells them that he will be handed over and crucified. You know that after two days, the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. All this as if to say, even that expectation of punishment and rewards, that is not the central action of God in Jesus, nor is that even the last movement of what God is doing through Jesus. He's getting them to see that even he himself is about to experience that isolation, that abandonment, that betrayal that he talks about in that judgment scene. Where even those who are closest to him either leave or are powerless to intervene, powerless to do anything. So maybe God does have beef, but not that nitpicking, scorekeeping kind of way. If God has beef at all, it is probably with that which continues to alienate, continues to dehumanize and perpetuate suffering and injustice. And maybe that's what we're supposed to see time and time again as we look at our neighbor, as we look at the world in which we live. Because in Jesus, we continue to see that God continues to give God's very self to bring healing and restoration to the world. And maybe the message for us today is that unlike the sheep and the goats, we shouldn't be surprised that this is the response God chooses. But instead, with boldness, we can claim that, yes, of course, this is how Christ shows up in the world. This is Christ among the hungry, among the alienated, the left out, the lonely. And the challenge is whether or not this will actually affect our lives, influence our decisions, our choices, and change our actions. The challenge is if we can actually accept that this is the healing and reconciliation to which God calls us. Amen. Glory to the 
righteous, worthy is the Lamb. Death could not hold him down, for he is risen. Seated upon the throne, he is the Lamb of I'll be leading our prayers today, and there'll be an opportunity uh, for you to to share any prayer requests that you have as well. We'll have the microphone kind of passed around during that time. I'll end the petitions here. So God, uh, please respond. Your mercy is great. Let's turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of ELCA World Hunger and partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we know merciful judgment. Guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are neglected. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger. Connect any who are isolated. And surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who continue to suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we are made the people of his pasture. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear now the prayers we offer. And all who turn to you, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the safe return of hostages and for military de-escalation, for the attentiveness to humanitarian needs in Palestine and Israel and a continued cease to the fighting. We pray for rescued operations following a tunnel collapse in India, for residents of Iceland and New Guinea, as volcanic activity increases, for victims of gun violence and for their loved ones, and for family and friends who have gathered this week who are making the journey home, and especially those relationships that are strained. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. We offer our spoken prayers 
and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now gather the tithes and offerings for God's continued work and mission in and through this community. O oh, blessing, honor, glory to the Lamb, holy, righteous, worthy is the Lamb. Death could not hold him down, for he is risen, seated upon the Lamb of God. Blessing, honor, glory to the Lamb, holy, righteous, worthy is the Please stand as you are able, <clears throat> and we'll join together in praying the offering prayer. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take some time to share Christ's peace with one another. Well, it's a blessing that we have the, if we have the image of Christ on the judgment throne, judging all of creation, we also have this image of Christ at the table with us, welcoming us and extending us that love and hospitality of God, that fellowship that is always there as well. 
we come to this table of Christ yet again. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ, who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, well... um, have communion as we usually do. The worship team will commune first, followed by this side, moving our way this way. Um, For those of you who prefer gluten-free wafer, just let me know. We have those as well as the regular wheat ones. Um, Wine is in the, on the bigger tray, the red liquid, and the more clear liquid has grape juice for those who have that preference. And, um, I think that's it. No other special instructions today. This is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. All right, we have some announcements today. I believe we have some fellowship time afterwards, so please join us if you are able to do so. And there's a sign-up sheet that you can see for future weeks as well, uh, so we can keep that going. Uh, Advent starts next Sunday. A few of you have let me know that you're willing to help out, which is great. Uh, we're going to meet this week uh, talk about some of the Advent things. Uh, so we have um, kind of an art project thing going on, uh, wreath-making, devotion writing too. I'd love to have a couple, uh, even if we just send out two devotions from people in the congregation per week, six people is all we need looking for you to write a devotion uh, of, of your choosing. I can help you out looking at a, a verse or something. Our, our Advent theme is do not be afraid. So if you can maybe Think of a time where you can relate to that theme, where that theme spoke uh, with you and tie in some scripture, write a little short reflection, 300, 400 words or so. That would be great. We can email that out. Um, would love to have more people let me know or Christy know that they can, um, that they're willing to do a devotion. We'd love to, love to send those out uh, to share kind of our Advent reflections together. Um, all right, more, that's enough about that one. Uh, but also midweek Advent services will start, not this Wednesday, the following. Advent is short this year, just three weeks of Advent. Usually we have four. So we have our Wednesday evening services. It'll get started about 6.30 with a simple meal that we'll share together, followed by an evening prayer time where we have, you know, some prayers, some short liturgy and songs. That's really a nice... Uh, a nice break during, during the midweek time. So that'll be in two Wednesdays from now that will start. Um, let's see, what do we have next? All right, uh, stewardship pledge drive. I believe you've seen those emails, right? We are, would like to have those stewardship pledges due in the office tomorrow or to the financial secretary, well, by tomorrow, um, November 27th. And those uh, forms, if you need a pledge form, they were emailed out. If you need one, they are over at the Usher station. Uh, that really helps us out with, uh, you know, budget planning as we look to, to next year and so forth. All right. Um, also, uh, KOK Preschool is doing a gingerbread decorating activity at the beginning of September. Where they need our help is... What did I say? September? Goodness. <laughs> Take a couple weeks off, and it takes me a while to kind of get back in the, in the groove here. December, beginning of December. They're going to be decorating on December 5th. Beforehand, it'd be great to have a few volunteers here who actually build the houses. Uh, that makes it a little easier for the preschool families. They can just focus on the decorating. So um, I don't even think you need to purchase the houses. I, um, we're going to take care of that, and we'll just need your help in building them. So if you're willing to build these houses, um, we'll, uh, let me know. Talk to me or Christy, and uh, we'll get all set up here. All right. And then in a couple Saturdays, this was a great event last year. We had Christmas decorating. See, Paul, yay, looking forward to it already. We'll decorate the sanctuary for Christmas. There's also a lot of cookies, more about that later. Um, a Christmas craft table going on we had last year, and also gift wrapping. Now, the gift wrapping part is part of our Social Concerns uh, Toy Angels um, effort that we have each year, uh, partnering with um, Women's and Children's Shelter, Union Gospel Missions Women and Children Center. So um, talk to Christy. If you uh, have some free time, would love to shop for gifts. If you're interested in doing that, um, let Christy know because we do need some shopper this week, Christy. Uh, okay, by the 9th. If you can do that shopping by the 9th, talk with Christy 
Um, have I kind of covered everything here about this activity? It's fun, really fun. Uh, starting at 1 p.m. I don't know. Were we done by like three? We took a few hours. Yeah, we'll take a few, three or four yeah. that time. But it's good family fun. Um, even if you don't, if you're not here with your family, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so anyway, come along. That to look forward to. Any other announcements today? No. Got it covered. All right. Excellent. Well, if you have a birthday in December, show up next week because that will be the first Saturday where we'll sing our December, December birthday song. Uh, otherwise, please stand as you're able for our blessing and closing song. Friends, receive this blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense and I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus and he's never let me down he's faithful Beloved of God, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. Thank
Hey, hey, hey. One more time. He won't fail. He won't fail. 